If we could just find dog cancer early enough, almost 50% of all cancers could be cured. That's right, cured. That's according to the Veterinary Cancer Society. But how do we detect cancer early enough to make a difference? Well, what if a microscopic worm, a really small one, could sniff a sample of urine from your dog and reveal the presence of cancer before there are any apparent signs? Welcome to Dog Cancer Answers, where we help you help your dog with cancer. Hello, friend. Today, we delve into a fascinating topic at the intersection of biology and medicine. We're talking about a tiny worm that may have potential in cancer detection, a microscopic roundworm called Senatorb habde elegans. I probably butchered that. No wonder it is usually called by its first initial only, C, as in C. elegans. C. elegans is known for its simplicity and usefulness in scientific studies. So what does this tiny nematode, basically a tiny worm, have to do with cancer detection? Well, here's the theory being researched. C. elegans have a highly sensitive olfactory system capable of sniffing out specific chemical signals. The fancy scientific term for this movement towards chemicals is called chemotaxis. Researchers have found that C. elegans move towards cancer-specific markers in urine samples. And the idea is that these tiny worms could show us that cancer metabolites are present in a urine sample simply by moving towards them. This dead simple method shows promise in detecting various cancers early. And that is a goal in cancer treatment because early detection results in better outcomes. Now, this is emerging technology, so it's important to approach it with cautious optimism. The published papers show a notable sensitivity and specificity of C. elegans in early cancer screenings, but there are still questions to be answered. Can these worms distinguish cancer from other conditions like chronic inflammation or a urinary tract infection? We have not seen the answers to those questions yet, and a company in Japan that has been using C. elegans to screen human cancer early is facing some tough questions about its accuracy from that country's incredibly skeptical medical establishment. But what about dogs? After all, this is dog cancer answer, and there is nothing that we want more than a good, simple, easy, early screening test for dog cancer. In a simple urine catch where you just basically get a little bit of the dog's pee and it doesn't require refrigeration really couldn't be any easier for us dog lovers, right? Well, today we are talking to two special guests who are using a simple urine test and C. elegans to find dog cancer early. First up, Dr. Paige Wages, a veterinarian who says the new screening test Oncotect is changing the way that she practices medicine. It's helping her find dog cancers early, sometimes even before the dog shows any signs of cancer. Then later in the show, we will speak with Chan Namgong. He is the entrepreneur behind Oncotect. His enthusiasm and insights into the commercial and practical aspects of this technology are truly eye-opening. Now, as you listen to these interviews, remember that Science is a field of exploration and constant learning. While C. elegans offer exciting opportunities and possibilities, it's part of a larger puzzle in our ongoing battle against cancer. Research is still ongoing, but the test is available today. Is it the groundbreaking development that we hope for? Stay tuned as we set out on a journey of discovery with a little bit of cautious optimism. Let's dive into our conversations. First up, Dr. Paige Wages. Dr. Paige Wages, thank you so much for being with us today. Thanks for having me. So I know you live on a place that you call the Wages Funny Farm, and you have a whole menagerie of, of dogs and turtles and peacocks and ducks, and a bird may actually join us during this potentially conversation. So that's that's great. So one of the animals that is not on that list are worms, but you're using them in your practice to detect cancer. Tell me about that. It's true. So we are using worms. I don't use, well, that's not true. I have dried worms that my chickens eat. 
So okay. I do. But, um, but not for dog new, cancer. No, no. No, no. But there is a new test that's been developed by Oncotect that uses worms to detect cancer. And it's for, they smell the gene, cancer genes and whatever is turned on is my understanding of the test. Mm-hmm. So I am just a practitioner in the area that was approached by the company when they were first starting to see if we, they could run some, use some of our samples of mm-hmm. urine and it's, mm-hmm. it's in urine, which is pretty easy to catch, very easy to do. And um, we give them urine. It used to have to be frozen and it doesn't have to be anymore. And they w- feed it to their worms and then spit out whether or not we think the dog has cancer. So it's a pretty cool technology. And how many uh, of your patients have you tested using this technology? Oh, I don't know. A lot. A lot. It's been out for a couple of years. So yeah. we've been doing it since it came out pretty much. So I generally, any dog that's older, and it's, right now it's only in dogs. Um, and so I generally will test anybody over the age of six or anybody that we're worried might have cancer and we haven't found it yet. Mm-hmm. So if there is any suspicion, we'll send the urine off. Or if it's just an older dog as part of a regular wellness screen, we just send it off. And so, I mean, a lot. Are we talking dozens, hundreds? Hundreds, probably. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So, so uh, you've been described as an evangelist of this. You really oh. like this. Oh, no. Is that true? I I will definitely talk the test up to anybody. It has been an amazing game changer for me in practice, for sure. Um, it has changed the way, you know, for us to be able to detect cancer so much earlier, it's pretty awesome. Um, and it's, it's really neat to be able to give, be able to give that to our clients as an are option. There, are there some anecdotes or stories you've had with specific, uh, patients, clients who, who you were able to use this test with, and then, and were able to detect cancer early and it turned out a lot better. Yeah. I mean, I can't tell you the number of, um, splenic masses that we didn't know were there mm-hmm. <laughs> that the, the test picked up. So, you know, it, mangiosarcoma. The test, I mean, him, well, yeah. they came back other ones too. Okay. Um, but they, so with the results, when they come back, you get mild, moderate, or um, maybe it's severe. Anyway, the, or high, mm-hmm. low, moderate, and high. And so the moderate, the my, the low ones, we don't worry about. The moderate and the high ones, we are, recommend doing an ultrasound of the abdomen and chest x-rays. Mm-hmm. And so, and sometimes we find some things and sometimes we don't. Um, but the majority of the ones that are moderate or high or high moderate have something. And so we've been able to screen those patients and find a mass on the spleen and go in and take it out, get a biopsy on it. We're done. Don't have to worry about it. Um, or we've found some cancers in the chest that you never know are there until they're a problem. Um, or a couple of dogs had mast cell tumors that we didn't know were there or coming. And then we've had a couple that had lymphoma and we didn't know. So, Hmm. so catching the, if we can catch those cancers earlier and start treatment earlier, it will prolong the life of those patients. So So. do you sometimes just do, you said you do this with senior dogs. So you're doing this Mm -hmm. with dogs who, I mean, you're just older. They're not showing any signs that indicate cancer. Right. So we'll do it on dogs that we're worried about because they're losing weight or for some other reason, or we do it as a general screen. Yeah. So, I think that voice you heard was your bird, right? That is the bird. <laughs> She's coming. God. Warning. <laughs> I believe in Dog Podcast Network. This is a first. Uh, I love it. I'm very so, sorry. <laughs> no, it's it's great. I, I think everyone who's enjoying this podcast probably likes the idea that a bird is joining it. So yes. in terms of some of the um the the false positives or the you know, like that that you've got. Where, and then and then obviously the corollary of that is a false negative. How do you address that? We haven't had a lot of false positives. Okay. So the dogs that have tested positive, if we didn't find something initially, it shows up within three to six months. Okay. So okay. those dogs, if we don't find anything on the first scan, we'll recommend redoing the testing. Yeah. in three to six months and see sometimes, and I've had a couple where I think a gene was turned on and then it turned back off because mm-hmm. we'll test, do the, do the urine screen again in three to six months and it'll be low. Mm-hmm. So there may have been something that was there and then it turned off. 
Your bird is mugging for the camera. I'm very I just, sorry. I, I think it's just adorable. Uh, again, a first for DPN, and, and, and I love it. So, on the on the dogs who didn't didn't see anything for six months, and then and then, I mean, what what were your thoughts as a vet who's like, is this? I mean, what do you think when you see that? It's like you're coming back with the test of these, and you don't see anything, and then six months later, you do see cancer. And I, it's it's just a conversation to have with the owners is that there's there may be something coming mm -hmm. and, you know, it does put people on edge for a couple of months. But if we can again, if we can catch it early, the flip side is if it's high, we find cancer, we cut cancer out, we can use the test as a screen to see if it's coming back. So mm -hmm. those dogs will test negative if the cancer has been removed and not coming back. So if you have good margins and no metastasis. Know. Right. Then so we, the worms the worms don't smell the cancer. The worms don't smell it anymore. So we had a dog that is semi aggressive, so she's kinda hard to do an assessment on a lot that had an oral melanoma yeah. that was removed and um tested positive at the time. We um it was coming in for a met check, um, and we decided to send off the urine cancer screen instead and it was low, which meant we didn't have to do any more screening. So which was good for us and good for the patient because she didn't have to be sedated again. Wow. So. so when you are getting a, uh, give me a minute. I'm just trying to not laugh. It is <laughs> trying to be composed here. No, uh, you have to be human. It's a thing. I, I love it. I, I've never, this is, this is hilarious. So when you get back a test that indicates, yeah, there, there's some risk of cancer because it doesn't say where to look. So you said, you know, a lot of these have been hemangios or have been presumptive or have been hemangiosarcoma where do you begin scanning what do you begin doing i mean you're, you've already well, palpated the dog at this point i'm sure and yeah and again you don't see i mean on some of the, the masses we find are tiny little guys mm -hmm. i mean it it's there somewhere we just have to find it so mm -hmm. if we don't see anything i'll aspirate the liver and that's where we'll find the lymphoma or we'll aspirate the spleen and we'll pick up something there but it's the cancers we found are more than just the ones that the test says that it finds. Mm -hmm. So soft tissue sarcoma is, we find myosarcomas, which are generally benign, but shouldn't be there. Um, you know, other, we've seen other things and, you know, some of them come back benign, mm -hmm. which we take it out, we're done. And then we don't have to worry about it. So yeah, it's kind of, it's been kind of a neat, and it's, it's, like I said, it's a different way to think about medicine in a little bit and screening for your pets. Well, when you first heard it, when 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 the uh, uh, pioneer of this in your area, in North Carolina, came to you and said, "Hey, do you want to do you want to try this out?" What did you think when you started learning about the fact that this is basically worms sniffing for cancer? I thought it was very strange. Yeah. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, worms would, but you know what? I um, I have, I like to believe in people, and um, I thought it was an interesting idea. Yeah. And I'm always willing to try anything once, right? So yeah. we started sending samples and started getting results and started doing the scans. And it was a no-brainer that it is a really good test. And so. And how have your clients received it? it it's interesting because a lot of we get, you know, you get a lot of the concern with some of my other doctors is they're going to get kicked back. Is the client going to be like, like, is this really a thing? Like, is this going to work? It's not an expensive test at all. There are some other um, cancer screening tests out there that are pretty expensive. And those tests generally don't, you can sometimes not tell the difference between inflammation versus cancer. So they're not as definitive. This one is we have cancer or we don't. And so it's pretty straightforward. And, you know, there might be one or two. I think there's been two in the hundreds that we've sent that it didn't detect the cancer. But it really? was the cancers that were there were not ones that it was supposed to, you know, that they have found that they can find. So... What's the but most it, bizarre cancer it did detect? Most bizarre cancer. I mean, you it did said that sometimes. I mean, like have you gotten brain cancer, or we've gotten or, brain cancers. We've gotten, like I said, the 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 ones that are kind of like G whiz are the the lung ones because you just you have no idea. I mean, I, we had a dog come in for a blood work and a dental, and we did the blood work and sent the urine cancer test off. Did the dental dog did great, no problem. Test came back positive, had them bring them back in, did a chest x-ray, and there's a huge tumor in front of the heart. So, I mean, it was just kind of an interesting thing. And now we just, we can monitor that, you know, for the owner's sake so that they can kind of watch and see. And, so, and that we aspirated, it's benign, but it's there. So. 
how frequently do you do you run the test on on otherwise healthy dogs? I mean, every time personally for me, every time I send off a panel on an older dog, I, so I is have that the test. An, is that an annual or? To, well, if it's an older dog, so we try and do them twice a year. Okay. And what does so. it cost? I know you're in North Carolina and prices range, but what does it cost to a client to do that test? It's between 120. So we have a discount if we send it with their blood work, yeah. send it with their blood. You know, if we do it at the same time, right. there's a discount with it. Um, yeah. If they want to do it by themselves, then it's about 200. Okay. So, okay. so, and then, and then your clients, once they, once you told them, no, I really like this test. And do you explain to them how, how it works? Or no, I just tell them just that we're going to send your loss. Yeah. yeah I, so we just, I mean, it's just so interesting to, we just say, I'm going to send some urine off for urine cancer screen. And they're like, okay, great. So, I mean, it's, it's really neat that they are willing to do that. So why do you suppose this is not more readily accepted and adopted by, by vets across America? I think the currently the test just recently went to a mail order mm -hmm. so that you can send the urine through the mail with yeah. a special, um, it has a, a solvent in there that keeps the urine fresh, whereas before it had to be frozen. Hmm. And so that was kind of a limiting factor is the urine had to be immediately frozen and then transported frozen to the lab. And so we're local to the lab, so it was easier for that. Hmm. But now that we can do it by mail, I think I think the test is going to go like wildfire. I hope people will pick up on it because it's it was, and you can, all you have to do is you can go online, order the test, they ship it to you, you catch the urine, put it back in the mail, you're done. Has the efficacy changed at all? What you've seen since they changed no. from frozen to, to mail? Not at all. Mail the pee. Mail um, order pee. Mail <laughs> order pee. I think there, there, there's probably a, there's probably a, a something there. So which, um, types of clients would you not want to use this test or recommend this test for? I don't have anybody I wouldn't recommend it to. Yeah. Okay. And then, so in terms of the acceptance rate among other veterinarians, because oh. that's the thing, because once you start learning about this, it just sounds like it's better than sliced bread. Are we really just on the on the cusp of something big in terms of early detection among uh, uh, veterinarian cancers? We'll start. With I mean, dogs. I think it's it's hard for some people to think that there's something out there that might show that there's something coming. Mm -hmm. And so it's just, like I said, it's a way it's a, you, you just have to think about it differently. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, whereas before it's something's going to show up eventually kind of thing mm -hmm. and we'll find it then. But if we trying to get people to think about preventative medicine is a little bit harder sometimes because so, so you, you're a general practice vet, but you, I'm work, a general practice and, but you obviously see a lot of, of cancers in, in your community. Do you work with any oncologists? We have some oncologists around us, yes. So there are a couple that we, we there's so, two spe main specialty, or three really, specialty clinics around us that do some oncology, yes. Okay, so when, when those oncologists get involved and, and you've had an opportunity to talk about this oncotest with them, what, what, what reception have, have you heard from, from those doctors? They, um, they actually have... Um, one of the oncologists in the area is actually on the board with the test. Mm -hmm. And so he's pretty much been educating the ones in the area about it. And it's, we get pretty good acceptance with it. So, yeah. Wow. Uh, so is it, in how many years have you been practicing veterinary medicine? 20 years. Have you seen anything like this in terms of like something that is as simple as this, that could make a profound difference? No, it's like I said, it's absolutely been wonderful. I think we've had the test maybe two years or a year and a half, maybe two years now, but it's been, it has changed the way I treat or screen patients for sure. So, and so we have obviously uh, folks who are, are watching this and listening to this podcast are very interested in dog cancer. What advice would you give to dog lovers who are concerned that their dog may have cancer? I would order the test and run it. I mean, there's there's no harm in doing the test when you submit the. So you don't have, your veterinarian doesn't have to do the test. You can um, order it online and do it. You just put in your veterinarian information. If the test comes back positive, your veterinarian will be notified of the test results as well. And then there is a. a I think there's a technician. There's a line of that a phone line people can call for the questions if they have questions about the test. 
It's fascinating. Do you have any, what, what if any financial interest do you have in the company? I don't have anything. Okay. You just, you just, you're just, I just think it's you're a great just an test. evangelist. I, think supposed to do it. I just like, if, 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 it, if it's $200 for you to find out if your pet has cancer yeah. versus a thousand dollars to do an ultrasound and x-rays, it just seems like a no brainer to me. So, and a lot of people lose pets to cancer. And so they're scared that their next ones are going to have something. So I have, I mean, I do have clients that since the pet turned two or three, we're running the, you know, they want to run the test every year. So that's fine. Wow. Well, I know why you are uh, one of, Amer you're a finalist for one of America's uh, favorite vets, right? Yep. Uh, well, I, I am sure you will uh, become one of America's favorite vets. This is fascinating. <laughs> Dr. Page Wages, thank you so much for being with us today. You're welcome. Thanks for having us. Rarely have I heard a veterinarian as excited about anything as Dr. Wages is about this new urine test. It's pretty exciting. I want to thank her and her parrot angel for joining us and sharing her perspective. Now we're going to hear from Chan Namgong, the founder and CEO of Oncotech, the company that brought this test to the veterinary market. Chan Namgong, thank you so much for being with us today. Of course. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. So you are across the country. You're in North Carolina, which is where you guys are headquartered. That's correct. And I guess the whole story starts with worms, which is That's kind of an unusual <laughs> thing to talk about on Dog Cancer Answers. But tell me how worms are critical to, to what you do and to dog cancer detection. Yeah, absolutely. So about five, uh, five years ago, back in 2019, I came across, uh, well, I have to start with my personal story first. Okay. So my mom had breast cancer. Uh, she's cancer-free now. But during that event, um, I mean, I never had any close family member had any cancer. So it was mm -hmm. a really first time. And I had a um, chance to read on a lot of cancer-related um, articles and research papers. And I came across this research paper that was published by a group of scientists that have discovered that these uh, the microscopic nematodes called C. elegans have a, such a high sense of smell that it can actually detect cancers in human medicine. And I was like, this just sounds too good to be true. But before that, I've heard, uh, or and I've also read that dogs can detect cancer in human medicine. And they can do that because cancer cells produce very particular smell that's different from normal cells and, and, and trained dogs can tell the difference between two. So I thought there has to be a reason why, you know, dogs can do that. And if C. elegans with their olfactory receptors can do that, uh, maybe there's a solution for, um, in, in veterinary medicine. Mm -hmm. And this is back in 2019. And back in 2019, while there are cancer screening options for human medicine, there wasn't anything for companion animals. Um, so I wanted to find out if it's really true. So I reached out to a local veterinarian who was, who found this to be really, you know, interesting and innovative way to detect cancer. So he helped me with, you know, uh, cancer and non-cancer urine samples. And I found a company that can run proof of concept in Eugene, Oregon. So, um, at that point, um, they came back with a very promising data. And I was like, okay, now that I have this promising data, like, what do I do? So as a, um, you know, uh, serial entrepreneur, I was like, you know, just hell with it. Let, I'm going all in. <laughs> so that's how I started the business. Okay. Well, that's how you started the business. But let's talk about the, the these little microscopic worms that can sure. smell cancer. Uh I know you're not a scientist yourself. You're a, mm. you're, a, you're an entrepreneur, and I totally respect that. Um, but I'm trying to understand a little bit more of the science about sure. how these, yeah. you know, cause I like, there are anecdotes obviously of dogs being able to detect human cancer, but they're not used with any sort of reliability. Um, That's true. how is this, a, how is this superior say to dogs being able sure. to smell? So they have a, um, a, a neuronal receptor that is responding to these cancer metabolites that are in the urine that contains them. Right. And they're actually attracted. To them they can actually they actually like the smell of cancerous metabolites and they actually respond 
in their neuro, in in their olfactory receptor they actually respond to that and we measure the responsiveness of their neuronal response and then based on their the the strength of their response we categorize we can categorize dogs as low moderate and high risk and what you said about like, why is you know dogs not being used to detect cancer in human medicine then well the reason for that is because it's really expensive to train dogs to take you know carry out the task and it's not commercially scalable platform right um, because dogs are like humans, like they can only do so many, and also it's very expensive to train dogs. Mm -hmm. So that while we know that that's possible, no one has been able to commercialize it. Well, what we have done is we've been able to commercialize, uh, you know, create a commercialized scalable platform where we can use worms to detect uh, or screen cancer risk in dogs' urine samples. What degree of, of effectiveness? How, how efficient is it? What do you mean by how efficient? Well, how fast were, we can do it? Or? No, no, no. But in terms how, of how accurate. Accurate like, is so, it? Yeah, sure. what's, what's the accuracy? Yeah, so we've, we've been running this our test for over, over two years, and we've done over 650 um, dogs of all shapes and sizes. And based on the clinical data we have, our accuracy, our sensitivity is 83%, which is true positive, mm -hmm. and our specificity, which is true negative, which is 96%, which is... Compared to other, you know, liquid bio, blood liquid biopsy tests that are in the market space, we are uh, compatible or even better than some of our competitors. Okay, um, and I imagine you know we'll get to the, we'll do the we'll start the entrepreneurial journey first because clearly you know you focusing right now on pet cancer, uh, dogs and cats or just or just dogs. Just dogs right now, okay. uh, but we do have plans to start testing and developing a test for cats later okay. this year and, and potentially for horses next year. Okay. But I would think that this goes so much beyond animals to humans, which is what the initial research was done in detecting right. cancer, right? Is but that sort of the basis for, for, what, for what you're doing? You're trying to, you know, test it in the animal market. Is well, so many companies <laughs> that we talk to and then sure. eventually roll it out. Sure. No, there is a human implication for our technology, and you know, I would be lying to you if I, not nah, if I'm not thinking about it. But we are really solely focusing on uh, veterinary medicine, uh, right. canines, felines, and equines, right. because the human medicine is on a on a totally different level. Requires a lot more capital, a lot more mm -hmm. time, and we really want to focus on um, the veterinary medicine right now. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, five years, ten years later, you know, where we be? You know, I can tell you. And so, again, just to geek out with me a little bit about these nematodes, is that, is that? Sure. Uh, so, how, tell, tell me the life of a nematode. Um, there are, what, what, um, what can you tell me about nematodes? Like, uh, uh, so, C. elegans, which is a scientific term of these, these nematodes, uh -huh. worms, they're the very first multicellular organism that was ever DNA sequenced. Okay. So we know everything about these worms, and they're actually, if you ever study biology or if you ever study like toxicology, uh, C. elegans is a model organism. Mm -hmm. So a lot of scientists use C. elegans to study, again, like pharmacology, toxicology, stem cells, cancer cells, um, environmental study. So it's widely used worm, but they use it for different purposes at the, in different disciplines. Mm -hmm. What we have done is we, we are really uh, honing on their olfactory receptors and their sense of smell mm -hmm. and using that to you know screen cancer in uh, in 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 canine urine samples okay so so again i'm just like envisioning how this works I, I, they they get a, a sample of urine and the and what? Nemat the nematodes are introduced to it and then they are looking under micro I literally, I'm trying to like visualize. Sure. How yeah. This yeah. Works. So, yeah, absolutely. So, we have uh, two methods that we are uh, we are running. The first method is called chemotaxis, which is really literally we place uh, urine samples on the agar plates, and then we put nematodes in the middle, and we mm -hmm. we observe their uh, behavior, migration behavior, and then we quantify their behavior, and that's how we get the chemotaxis index value. The new method we are developing and we are using is we are actually literally measuring the calcium activity of a neuron that I was telling you about. And, and depending on how intense they're responding, we can measure 
uh, and 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 uh, indicate whether there's a cancer risk or not. And the calcium level is somehow connected to their olfactory senses. That's right. Okay, so we so are measuring. So when they're so they're a, drawn to they're drawn to the aroma. so uh, the, so the second method there that I was telling you is called microfluidics method, and we actually trap them in a very small microfluidic chip, and we f- we pass through urine samples, and yeah. then they uh, respond depending on whether there's cancerous metabolites or not, or VOCs, cancerous volatile organic compounds or not. Wow. Okay. And this is all done at your facility in, in right. North Carolina. That's right. Is how long does it take? You said, you know, I asked about efficiency earlier. How how long does it take from when you get a sure. sample to being able to 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 get a result? Um, for, we inside our lab, we, depending on how many samples we have at the, right. at the time, but you know, our promise to our consumers or our you know veterinarians that we work with is within five business days. Okay, so that's 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 pretty quick. And you've done this so far with six hundred dogs, like. 650 dogs. 650 dogs. And was that in the, does that include, you know, like both the commercial project as well uh, that, as, the, as the scientific or since you? No, that's just a commercial. That's just like paying customers. So okay. we've had like 650 paying uh, customers uh, and their dogs that have gone through our test. Okay. So I get a sample of my dog's urine or a veterinarian gets it and they send sure. it to you and... What is the report that comes back? What does the veterinarian see? And, and, and sure. is there a different type of report for, for dog lovers? A very good question. Um, there are two ways to, first of all, there are two ways to send a sample. One is through veterinary hospitals. We are working with about 70 hospitals across the country, and we have international clinics as well. Uh, and if you, your local vet doesn't offer a test, you can buy it directly from our website. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then our kit comes with all the collection tools you need to be able to collect urine at home e- e- easily. So once you send us a sample, we run our assays, and we have two versions of a report, one for pet parent and one for veterinarians. And I just want to make sure that I say this loud and clear, that we are our goal is never to circumvent veterinarians. Our goal is to work with veterinarians, and we keep we keep them informed and involved throughout the entire process. Mm-hmm. Um, so we have two versions of a report: one for pet parent and one for veterinarians. Uh, pet parent version is a is a simpler version than veterinarian version. Uh, it shows the risk level, low, moderate, high, and then what the next steps should be. For veterinarian version, we shows the the risk level and then quantitative value of the risk that we measure. And then the next steps, as well as a scientific interpretation of what each risk means. And because you're mainly focusing on the four main types of dog That's cancer right. at this point. That's what we've done studies so far. Is the test indicative of like, oh, this might be hemangiosarcoma or this might be osteosarcoma? Does it, does it, can it get that granular? No, it doesn't get that granular. And, and no cancer screening tests. Uh, in the market right now, does that? It's mm-hmm. you know all kind of cancer risk, positive or negative, or low risk, moderate risk, and high risk. Okay. What about false negatives and 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 false positives? Sure. We were I mean, that a little bit earlier on. Sure. We definitely have false positive and false negatives. There's no test that's 100 percent uh, in the market. Whether even if it's a diagnostic test, whether it's ultrasound or X-rays, right? There's um, they have false positive and false negatives. Um, so far, our, you know, our accuracy of um, the sensitivity again, the true positive, it's been eighty three percent. So there's a seventeen percent that we are not accurately measuring. Right. And then for you know specificity is ninety six percent. So there's a you know four percent that's we are not correctly um, measuring either. Um, so um, that's just the kind of the nature of science too. That you know it's that hence the reason why the screening tests. In order for screening tests to be well adapted and uh, well used, it needs to be first of all accessible. You know, it has to be easy to get and convenient, and also affordable. You've, you've and, mastered you've mastered the easy to get. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> I mean, every unfortunately, we've all known <laughs> we know how to collect some dog urine. But sure. tell me about the affordability. How how expensive is this? Sure. So. Our test online is two hundred and fifty dollars. Okay. Uh, and which you know, compared to our competitors, um, I don't you know, I know I'm sure you've uh, are aware of uh, other competitors like Pet D X, mm-hmm. which can cost anywhere between six hundred to thousand uh, dollars. I've seen hospitals 
a wide range, but still it's it's pretty costly. Mm-hmm. So compared to that, our test is definitely more affordable. And in terms of accuracy or false positives, false negatives, how does it compare to something? And there are sure. a number of on the on the market. Uh, sure. But how does it compare to PET DX? Uh, PET DX, their sensitivity is about, last time I checked, was 54% sensitivity and 98% passivity. Okay. But I have to, but their um, number of cancer types that they measure is over 30 cancer types mm-hmm. versus we are only focusing on four major um, common cancer types. Got it. Okay. And so of the, the, the 650 tests that you've run so far, how many of those were effectively ordered by a veterinarian versus a consumer saying, this is really cool stuff I sure. want to find out. About, ha- about half and half. Okay. About half and half. We do have a lot of veterinarian um, customers, but you know, because of we're only working with the 70 vet clinics across the country and they're right. out of 30,000, right. right? There's, you know, we have more work to do. We have a long way to go. And people are finding us through, you know, social media or you know, podcasts, podcasts. like this, and <laughs> and they and they want to, you know, they want to try it, and, and you know, we ha- we always encourage them to work through a veterinarian channel, right. uh, but you know, if their vet doesn't offer it and they want to do it, then you know, we still have an option for them to purchase it. And if their vet doesn't offer it, I'm sure you you'll send their vet the That's veterinary and, report, right? And and going back to what I was saying earlier about like our goal is never to circumvent veterinarian channel, and we always right. want to keep them, you know, involved and informed. Right. Like yeah, let's say you purchase it, James, uh, and we don't have any, you know, vet near your you know location. Uh, part of the activation process is for you to input your pet information, obviously, but to input your veterinarian information. And as soon as you put your veterinarian information, we send them an email proactively and let them know, hey, James purchased this kit. This is what the test is about. This is the science behind it. Because we want to educate them, we want to keep them, you know, aware of you know what they're getting, what they're seeing. And then when the report is ready, and this is another thing that we do differently than other um, um, differentiate our, our experiences, that if the result is a low risk, we send the report to you and your veterinarian automatically via mm-hmm. email. But if it's moderate or high risk, mm-hmm. one of our vet techs will actually call the hospital first and give them a heads up. And then we call you and, and walk it through, you know, what this means and, you know, you know and it suggests you to make a follow-up appointment with your veterinarian for additional further diagnostic tests or further consultation. And then we send the report to you and your veterinarian. We thought that for especially for moderate high risk cases, we thought the human interaction is really important because we don't want to panic you. We don't want to you know, you know we don't want to go down a Google rabbit hole, right? <laughs> so, right. Yeah. No, um, I think that's I think that's a, a very distinctive thing. I I, mm-hmm. I don't know if other early detection companies do that where they actually pick up the phone and, sure. and talk. Yeah, we um, thought that that's a really important aspect of our user experience. Because mm-hmm. um, again, like cancer is a it's a big word, right? And people right. don't want to hear that your dog has cancer, and you know, and we don't want to concern them, we don't want to worry them, we don't want to panic them. So we really want to hold their hands throughout the process and and you know, and and tell them exactly what they need to do. Because again, this is a screening test and not confirmatory diagnostic test. Uh, we don't want people to be confused by that. So we want them to go back to their veterinarian and do ultrasound uh, or first the, do more thorough physical exam to look for other clinical signs of cancer mm-hmm. and then um, do like ultrasound or x-ray to confirm or deny the cancer suspicion or to identify the type and location. So I'm struck that half about of the, of the uh, results you've looked at right now are, are ordered by vets and half by consumers. Was that always your plan? Because it seems like that's a really high consumer initiation of this. Sure. No, our goal was, you know, it was kind of, <laughs> at first our test was only available to hospitals. Right. Um, before we launched our, you know, kit. Mm-hmm. Um, we only work with local hospitals um, because at that point, you know, the the sample had to be frozen. We have to go pick them up. And so mm. the process wasn't easy. But then once we launched the kit and we came up with the preservative tubes, so you no longer need to refrigerate or you know, freeze, uh, we can go you know, outside of our region to work with the veterinary hospitals or clinics and then you know, direct to consumers. Um, 
what we have found is while consumers are very excited about our test and this tool, they're still not sure, you know, this is something that needed to do. Um, we also, again, we want them to work with the veterinarian uh, hospitals, but, you know, working in onboarding hospitals takes a long time, mm-hmm. right? Um, and, you know, it's, it's, it takes a lot to, you know, convince them to offer our tests. And um, so it's, it's, it's kind of half and half, and we actually have more, um, I mean, I say half and half. We have we have more tests that are coming from veterinarian channels than direct to consumer right, right now. Okay, but I mean, sometimes that's a good entree to introduce veterinarians to a new technology. That's right. Or that's a, right. A new, a new, a new system. Um, the consumers. I mean, I think I've read a statistic that about half of the people who are searching like on Dr. Google, uh, for, you know, you know, my dog have cancer, their dogs do, don't have cancer there, but they're concerned about sure. that. So I can see, you know, from a market perspective, this is something that would be helpful. How frequently do you recommend, you know, a, a concerned pet parent do this test? Sure. So we recommend, um, this test for, uh, and as an annual screening test for senior dogs, seven years and older, uh-huh. um, for normal breeds. But if you have high risk breeds such as Goldens, Boxers, you know, um, uh, Bernese Mountain Dogs, Irish Wolfhounds, like larger breeds, do that more often, like every six months, because they are more prone to having cancer, uh, and start young age as young as you know five or six, mm-hmm. as opposed to seven. Um, again, this is meant to be a preventative, proactive approach. Like in human medicine, at a certain age, we you know we do you know, cancer screening, whether it's a PSA, you know, mammogram, right? Um, and not because we think that we're gonna have cancer. We just want to put ourselves behind the eight ball. Like we, if you if you need to find early enough to have effective treatments, and all four cancer types that we've studied, there are treatment options. Like they are treatable, really treatable. Mm-hmm. And according to American American Animal Hospital Association, half of all cancer canine cancers are treatable if caught early enough. Mm-hmm. Early uh, detection is always the key. We certainly for, talk about yeah, that a, here. At Talk any disease, about. right? Any disease, early early detection, early screening is the key. Right. It's just that you know, prior to us, there hasn't been an easy, accessible, convenient way to an affordable way to yeah. screen cancer uh, in dogs. So when you talk about affordability, two hundred and fifty is 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 okay. Do you envision as you get bigger that the price will drop? Oh, absolutely. I mean, there's a definitely economy of scale, right? Uh, and as we further develop our new technology and as we increase our efficiency, I mean, I do hope to reduce the price um, to you know hopefully one hundred and fifty below uh, point. Uh, hopefully, you know, soon enough. But you know, right now. Um, Online price is two fifty, mm-hmm. and a lot of hospitals um, they're suggest um, because we offer convenience and, and then uh, extra services online. We we sell for two fifty, but if you buy from a lot of veterinary hospitals, they normally sell it for two hundred dollars. Got it. Okay. And and what sort of reception have you gotten among? Or we'll we'll try different groups. Let's start with uh, veterinary oncologists. The, sure. The, there were only a few hundred of those in all of North sure. America for 6 million plus dogs who get sure. cancer. Sure. But what kind of reception have you received from, from oncologists? Sure. Good question. Going Before I address that, we also pay for shipping both ways. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Is that like FedEx? I mean, I imagine that you're no, in, you, in a... US, USPS. Okay, that's so, fast enough. Yeah, okay. but fast enough. I mean, we get it, you know, within continental United States, we get the tax samples back within four business days or four, four calendar days, four to five calendar days. So mm-hmm. it's not a problem. Uh, we have two, uh, going back to your question, answering your questions about veterinary oncologists, we have two veterinary oncologists on our uh, advisory board. And we also have two oncologists, veterinary oncologists, that work with us as a client. So we have two oncologists that, that are actually using our test to cancer screen. We presented our um, science as a poster presentation at Veterinary Cancer Society two years ago in November. Okay. Uh, it went very well. Um, and our primary... Target market is a general practice right. veterinarians, not oncologists. Because by the time, if your dog is that sick and have that 
clear signs of cancer, you need to take your dog to oncologist right away. Like right. We, our test is more primarily uh, targeted for GPs uh, as as a part of you know senior wellness check. Right. Um, and because again, this is proactive preventative. Uh, but so far, oncologists have uh, I haven't heard any oncologists say. Um, and then recently, actually, another thing we recently was included in uh, today's veterinary practice uh, journal as two vet oncologists wrote that paper, and we are one of four options that they presented as a liquid biopsy as cancer screening test. One was breath test, mm-hmm. uh, which is actually developed by one of professors at NC State who we count as advisor, <laughs> Dr. Matthew Breen, um, and 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 then Oncotac for urine options. For blood options, there was a PET-DX and there's a new Q test. Okay. And the the two oncologists who are on your board of advisors, who are they? Uh, Dr. Dave Roslander, who is a vet oncologist at Blue Pearl, mm-hmm. and Dr. Steve Shaw at Sage Specialty Hospital okay. in, uh, in California, in San Francisco. Okay. And then in terms of from moving from like veterinary oncologists who are by their nature, very busy and and skeptical about sure. all sorts of stuff. But yeah, if you sure. can get detection early, do it. But what's the reception been among uh, rank and file general practice veterinarians? Oh, very good. Um, and we've, I mean, be, since we launched the kit and made the process so much easier and simpler for veterinarians, mm-hmm. uh, we've been adding hospitals really like aggressively. Um, at, at least you know four or five hospitals every week, which is very healthy um, number for us. And we've been getting really good responses from um, general practice uh, veterinarians uh, across across the country, uh, whether conventional medicine as well as the holistic medicine vets, and okay. and mobile and mobile vets too. And you said that you have some international vets, who are, or you're getting some from dogs overseas as well. What countries? Um, and, and, and we have, uh, we have, we were talking to, actively talking to like four or five vets in Canada. Mm-hmm. We have a uh, one vet, uh, that have already purchased and testing in Philippines. Mm-hmm. We have a, uh, um, vet in Spain mm-hmm. that's using our test. And we are just, and we are not reaching out to them. They're just the inbound leads. They find us from social media or just a Google search. Mm-hmm. And then they reach out to us and, and then we work with them. Okay. So uh, going back to, I guess, my uh, what I was talking about earlier in terms of people searching for answers like this, you actually, I mean, so you have an active web presence and, and people find you through, through sure, absolutely. search yeah. engines and places mm-hmm. like that. Okay. Yeah. Chan, thank you so much. This is fascinating. Early detection is certainly a critical part of being able to have a successful uh, dog cancer journey. Thank you so much for being with us today. No, thanks for having me. It's been an honor. What an interesting test. Now, in researching this show, we at DogCancer.com and Dog Cancer Answers spoke to other veterinarians and veterinary oncologists, and the consensus is that this test shows promise, but we just don't really know exactly how much at this point. Now, there's no harm in getting one of these tests for your dog if you want to see what it shows. Just remember that this test is not a diagnosis, It is just a screening tool. Have you used Oncotech already or are you considering using it with your dog? Tell us about it in the comments and be sure to check out the video notes for links. I'd like to thank our guests today on today's show, Page Wages and Cham Nangung. And I want to thank you for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe for more great interviews designed to help dog lovers facing dog cancer. From all of us at Dog Podcast Network, I'm James Jacobson, wishing you and your dog a very warm aloha. Thank you for listening to Dog Cancer Answers. If you'd like to connect, please visit our website at dogcancer.com or call our listener line at 808-868-3200. And here's a friendly reminder that you probably already know. This podcast is provided for informational and educational purposes only. It's not meant to take the place of the advice you receive from your dog's veterinarian. Only veterinarians who examine your dog can give you veterinary advice or diagnose your dog's medical condition. Your reliance on the information you hear on this podcast is solely at your own risk. If your dog has a specific health problem, contact your veterinarian. Also, please keep in mind that veterinary information can change rapidly. Therefore, some information may be out of date. 
Dog Cancer Answers is a presentation of Maui Media in association with Dog Podcast Network.